Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. This is a follow-up video to one that I put out about a month and a half ago. Uh, I purchased a Lorax 4K and VR solution through Costco. At the time when I bought it, I showed you guys how to, uh, where I got it, how much it cost, how to install it, how to set it up. And the first video was more around the logistical part of, you know, getting it and putting it all in and together. Um, when, at the time when I bought it, I didn't get an opportunity to do a lot with it as I was still learning as well. Um, so since then, I've had the system for about a month and a half. Uh, I've had a good chance to go through all the different menus, start to learn how to use all the different apps and applications that went along with it. And uh, I've had a lot of comments in the YouTube channel asking for follow-up on lots of different questions. So I thought I'd put together a second video and uh, give you guys an overview of what I think of the system now that it's been a month and a half and uh, sort of some of the learnings that I've had. So hope you guys enjoy the video. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to let me know. You're gonna have the main menu. Uh, in the main menu, you're gonna get to do the playback, backup, this for device information, this for log information and network information, and then this one for specific settings and storage. Uh, and then you can also shut the system down here. So if we start right away with the actual and if you right click, right click the mouse, you'll get this view here. This allows you to change the views of your cameras. So if you want to have all four cameras on the screen or if you have more than four, this is how you do it. And here's all four cameras. If you want to click on one in specific, you just double click on it and then you can zoom in and look around. Use the hand to move around. Zoom in on license plates. Then you can right click and go back to the field of view that you want. So let's just go back to view one here. So I'm just going to take the one camera. Okay, going back to the main menu. So if you want to do a playback, you can hit this button here. And you on the playback screen, you get the choice of the dates. So you can pick the month and the date. So today is the 1st of October. You choose which cameras you want to play back. So that's displayed down here. Here's all of your cameras. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And then you pick the time. So you can choose the time that you want the playback to occur. Or if you just want the whole day in here, you can do that. Um, you'll notice in here, I'll zoom in a little bit. And I can zoom in on the timeline. So here, I'll show you. If I pick the bar and then I zoom in, I can actually see the time a lot closer. You'll see the minutes here and you can narrow it down. So the one thing you can do here is, um, if you want to see motion, see the yellow? These are, these are areas where there was actually motion in the camera. So this camera four is the kitty camera. So here's, you can see, that's this camera here. And if I click on the motion, you can see there I am. I'm going down to the basement. So that makes it a little easier for searching and finding when things happened. If it's green, it's just continuous and it hasn't seen anything. Let me just click back here for a second. I'll stop this one. And if we clicked on one of the other ones, uh, green denou denounces that there's nothing happening in the actual screen. So you can kind of tell based on the yellow when there was action on one of the cameras. There's a feature I really like in the playback. It's called Smart Search. Essentially what you can do is you can click this icon, highlight the area that you want to see motion in, you re-click this area and then what the playback will do is go through all the footage and anything that moved inside this box, it'll actually come back to you and show you. So that's really handy um, if you want to see a certain area without having to scroll through, you know, hours and hours of footage. I really like that feature um, and I find that very handy. So from a playback standpoint, you have your usual controls, pause, stop, play forward, fast forward. This is the smart search. This is to add a bookmark on anything interesting. You can zoom in and out of the footage with it. Um, I'm still in the smart search here, but if you want to zoom in on the playback, you can. Um, and that's very handy. And then when you're done with the playback, you can just exit back to the live view. And you're here again. So this is a live view. Um, so that's the playback. This is your backup commands to back up your system which you can see, I'll show you. Um, you, can you can schedule backups uh, and create backups through here. Here is your remote device. So this is your device addressing. So you can see that I have three cameras plugged into uh, the, the unit that the cameras came with. 
and I have one camera here that's plugged into a switch upstairs. That's the kitty cam. So uh, it tells you the status, they're all green. It tells you their IP address. It tells you uh, what the names are for each one. And that's handy for that. Gives you your firmware, the type of camera that you're using in firmware. And then it also gives you some other information here. Um, IPC upgrade. I'm not 100% sure what this one is. Looks like you could upgrade the box maybe here. IP camera upgrade to be upgraded. Huh. Okay, so maybe it needs to be upgraded. Okay, so you get out of there. Here's your recording information. So the recording screen, it tells you which channel. So these are the cameras, one, two, three, and four. Tells you the type of recording, which is continuous. Your compression, so you can select H.264 or H.265. Your resolution, I've set it for the highest resolution. Whoops. I've set it for the highest resolution. Your frame rate, which 15 is the highest on that. Bit rate, CBR, um, bit rate here. And then I've selected the audio. You have to choose this if you want to be able to listen to the cameras and the audio Kodak. This is your substream as well. Um, I've set these at their highest levels as well. And then if you look along the top, this is snapshot. I've asked it to take a snapshot uh, and an image for each one. And like if you have motion, it'll take a snapshot. And if I want to take a photo with the app, it'll take snapshots as well. And then this is the overlay. So this is um, what you see on the screen. So these displays here, so the time and date, those things. And you can set those. The channel names, these are each of the names for the cameras. I have named all four of them. So left garage, right garage, front door, and then kitty cam, because when we were away on vacation, um, we had a camera that was stationed near the food bowl because we have an automatic food feeder and I wanted to make sure the kitty got fed. This camera is going to be outside here in the next couple of days. So that's it for these. Um, now if we go to here, these give you some information. So this is your hard drive information. It's just telling you that the status is normal, things are good. Um, recording information, it's giving you st some statistics on start time, end time of recording. The version that you have. I haven't really gone into this menu too much, but here's some events. Um, I have no events in here that it's showing. Network, um, it's showing me I've got two sets of IP, or this is my administration address for my IP. Um, load on the system, send speed, receive speed, everything's fine. Bits per second, it's telling you what resolution that the cameras are putting out, and everything's fine on those. Everything's fine on those. And it also can keep logs as well. Some of the stuff I'm not really using, I mainly wanted it for the notification system in the unit, and I also wanted it to be able to do the live view. Here is your setups. So if you have network changes, you can put them in here. Uh, your connections, actually this one here, uh, was one that they recommended to me for the uh, uh, preferred DNS and, and alternate DNS. Um, if you see here, we go through the different menus, IP filter, most of these, whoops. Most of these will come set up for you, but you can make changes. The one thing I did do was um, I put in my Gmail account, I put in the uh, SMTP server for Gmail, my Gmail access, uh, my email address, receiver, sender, the alert type, and what type of message. And this was when it gets a notification. When somebody walks into the different zones that I set, it will automatically send me an email to my Gmail account. So that was done in this section here and set up here. FTP I haven't set up. And the switch information is just standard like default. The events, this is probably one of the bigger areas you'd work with. Um, the events you can set for motion detection. So in this case, I have motion detection for camera one enabled. Camera one is this camera here, the left garage. Um, it's enabled. I have an area set, and here's the area that I've set. So all these red boxes are set. So there, if you walk into this zone, uh, it'll automatically alert me, and it'll also uh, let me know that somebody came into the area. If you walk across the grass here, it's not going to alert me, but as soon as you kind of get into my area, it's going to let me know. Um, I would say it works very well for the most part. 
Um, the one thing I've noticed is that if a car's lights from this neighbor over here beam into the driveway for a long period of time, it'll actually turn the camera on. So I've got that enabled. The area is set. It's scheduled to do it all the time. You can set a schedule for that. So if you want to change it so that it's only at night that it notifies you or uh, during the day when you're at work, you can actually change that in here for the day of the week and the hours that you want it set. So I have it notified for all the time. It's not a big deal. Um, that's how I've done it. So the other thing I have is um, I have it set to take a snapshot. So it takes one snapshot every time and sends me an email. I haven't messed with these too much. Um, I have played with these, the sensitivity and threshold for this camera because when I first put it in, if you had, uh, you know, uh, rain or, you know, I don't know, I guess rain was the big one and bugs uh, the camera was notifying me and I didn't want that so I turned the th the sensitivity uh, down a little bit and the threshold down as well so you have to play with these a little bit to get your settings the way you want them but now it's working pretty well um, and then it's got some warnings here in case it has a problem it's gonna send me an email Storage, I haven't messed with too much. It, it records everything. I just have it recording all the motion and the continuous. And I don't really care. Once it's full, it'll overwrite itself anyway, so it's not a big deal. And the settings, um, this is just your general settings. You know, the name of my device, device number, some of the basic information's in here. Time and date, you can set up in here. Holiday schedule, if you want a holiday schedule in there. Um, display, my account info, configuration and the backup. So I haven't done a lot. Most of these settings come pre-set up for you, so it's not a lot of work there. And then this one's to shut the system down. I had some specific questions about the camera itself um, in terms of you know the quality of the cameras. Um, people were asking which model this camera was. So this, this actual model for this camera is the LNB 810 5X-C camera. Um, these were purchased at Costco um, and I have seen them there but I haven't seen them anywhere else so I don't know if that's a Costco special thing or if they've got these in their newer or older cameras, I'm not sure. Um, they do work very well. Uh, overall, I would say they don't have the best zoom capacity. Um, they zoom with the apps and stuff they do zoom but once you get to that digital zoom you start losing the, the quality of the actual picture so that's one of the things i've noticed um, the camera itself also has in it a light which people have asked me a lot of questions about the light um, in terms of is it bright you can set how long the light stays on in the app so if you want the light to come on when motion is detected for you know 10 20 seconds you can have it on i think out of default it fires on for a quick second almost like a flash for a camera so that when they take your photo and you're on video it's easier for you to recognize maybe who it is so that's a nice feature um i think having the light on there is a bonus because the night vision is okay but having it light you up for a quick second so that it gets a better image of you that's good um and i do like that so i've actually set these lights to stay on for a few seconds each time they come on i think it's 10 or 15 seconds and then instead of the default and that's been pretty handy. The other thing it has is, is an audible alarm. Um, so you can hear the actual camera itself as well. Um, it's not that loud. I guess in a pinch it would work as a bit of a deterrence, but my the, the camera system that I have is mostly for me to be able to review the footage. I don't think in real time, um, most people would have the ability to do a whole lot here. Like if somebody walked up to your door and wanted in, um, chances are they're probably coming in. Right, but at the same time, this system would at least hopefully help them to, to, to deter that. I'm gonna show you, I'll show you how the light looks when it fires on here, and I'll also show you the, um, um, the sound it can make. So here's the light. So it's, it's not like extremely bright, it's definitely not a floodlight like you'd have outside, but it is bright, um, and it does, when it's outside at night and it's dark, it does help. Um, like I said, I think it's more meant for, you know, the ability to take a better capture of what's happening. The other thing is they have an alarm on there as well for a sound. So here I'll... That's not that loud, like this is me talking normal. 
So, you know, in in the middle of the night, maybe that's loud, but, or not, I get it, I don't know, I don't even think it's that loud. Um, I use, <laughs> to be honest, I use it to get my kids' attention when they're outside, so I'll <laughs> fire that on and they know they have to come in for a minute, so that's what I found with it so far. As you can see here, there was the login screen. I've logged into the application on my computer. You get a couple of views here on the top right. You see the time, date, and some information there. Over on the left, you have your controls. I'm going to hit the live screen view. I'm going to click my network on the top right hand side. These are all your cameras listed and named as well. You can see here in the tile view, you can drag and drop the different images around. So if you don't like the arrangement, you can change it. One of the things I'm doing right now is I'm going to change the stream type. Stream type allows you to have the highest resolution. Um, you have different choices in terms of the resolution that you see. And right now I'm changing each of these views to the 4K resolution. Um, if you notice along the bottom of the actual screen itself, you can see those blue boxes. Those are for the different layouts and configurations uh, along with that. If you look here in the main screen on the top left, you can see that I'm now 4K. Um, you can see I've named this one a left garage and on the top right it displays the information like time date so you know what's going on. This is a live view. The top here you have some different controls as well. You can click this button and hear audio and you can hear what's going on outside at the camera level which is pretty cool. You can also take a snapshot. Uh, you can zoom in and out. I'm going to zoom in here in a second by clicking this button. Now I have the ability to zoom anywhere I want. There's a license plate. Uh, and you can zoom around and move with the mouse uh, and the hand. You can see that it, it once it gets to the digital zoom, it's very difficult to read anything. Um, and I will show you at some point here how far it can go. But you can make out that there's a sign there in the car, but you can't actually see the details. That's a slightly disappointing for me. I was hoping it would have a much further zoom. Um, but it is crisp and clear up close. Uh, it's just once you get really far away that it's hard to see. Along the top here, I'm going to hit the next big option. This is the playback feature. Probably one of the most important features of the system is that it's recording all this information. On the right, you have all your cameras. On the bottom here, you have your time and date. So you can select the date you want to review the footage. And what you've done here is I've clicked search. It's going to come up with all of the different cameras. There's the four of them. The green bar shows you the continuous video. Anything in yellow shows you actual um, movement. So a lot of times you don't want to see all that other the continuous stuff, but you want to find out what's going on at a particular moment. That's where you click on the yellow. If you scroll with your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and you notice the time along the top here makes it a lot easier to figure out when uh, the different timing of the events are. Um, right now, this is what I decided to do for you fine folks as I have uh, measured it out and I will show you guys here at some point. Um, that is the 35 foot range and if you'll notice here, I, or 30 foot sh I should say, if you zoom in, you can, although a little difficult and this license plate is very old, make out the license plate. So uh, the claims that this thing can go 30 feet, at least during the daytime, I would say are accurate. Sorry for the bald patch on the back of my head, can't help that. This is 40 feet and this is um, where the digital zoom piece really does not do it any justice. There's the 35, 30 foot range and then here's when you zoom into the 40. So you can see it's very difficult to make it out. The detail is gone. So I think that's going to be a big negative to the system itself. Uh, although very clear and crisp, the image looks fantastic. Uh, a little disappointed I couldn't make it to the end of the driveway. Um, and then just for good measure, I stuck a 10 footer in here as well. So you could sort of see, uh, you know, 10 feet away from the actual camera, how it looks. Very easy to read, very crisp and clear. Moving on, here's where you have your devices listed. You can see at the bottom here, here's my cameras. I have three cameras that are on the actual NVR and one camera that is not. That camera that is not is connected to a network switch upstairs. Um, I didn't have a cable run direct to the NVR, so I just connected it to a switch I have existing in the house. And my house is wired with switches through the house and the system found it and added it to the actual system. So I was very pleasantly surprised surprised with that. So for folks who have cabling issues, that might be something that can help them. Um, in terms of the device configuration, 
a anything you can do on the actual NVR, you can easily do in this app. So here we go. Uh, here is your video feed and what's streaming. So you can dictate, you know, what quality you get, uh, the different uh, frame rates. This one will go up to 15 frames uh, per second. And then you can uh, add your audio and turn it on. You can also set in uh, snapshot modes and different things for photos. And then you can adjust um, the way it displays the date and name in the actual video footage. Here's your actual camera setting. You have the choice of normal, day, and night. This is normal. It goes with the time of day, and you can adjust the actual image quality. So I did use that feature, and it worked very well for the front door. It was very bright there during the day, so I was able to light it much better during the day with that feature. Um, here is one of the areas where you can actually set up your um, motion detection. Um, you can do that on all the different ways of your phone you can do it through this app itself on your computer or through the device and I definitely have motion detection set up for all of the different zones Here, here's what you can see how, how mine's set up. So you can see the red box around my driveway and car. If anything goes in that red box, it's going to send me a push notification as well as an email and a photo of what's happening. So it's uh, very easy to do um, and easy to set up. You can also set it up with a calendar. So if I didn't want it to go, if I wanted to go at night only, you can definitely set it up for days of the week, anytime that you want. Mine currently is set for all the time. I'm fine with that. I don't mind the notifications. I like it to see when a mail a mailman or a, a parcel comes to the door. So I use it all the time. Here's some of the different menus here. There's a lot of menus in the system. You don't necessarily have to mess with all of them. I just wanted to give you guys a good look at what you what what is in here and what's available to you. Um, moving on to the next thing here. Alarms, configurations. I haven't really said anything for alarms. Um, I you know I'm just happy to get the notifications and see what's happening. Here's the night vision. As you can see, you can definitely tell what's going on. Oh, this will creep you right out. This is one thing that I learned. Oh, God. You have to actually, uh, once in a while, take a brush to these cameras. I just set up a great big um, wood stick with a, a little soft end on it. And once in a while, I'll go out and sweep it off. But everybody likes the warm cameras. So right now, this time of year, all the bugs are looking for a home. And that'll actually trip your motion detection. Uh, unfortunately when something like that occurs so here's my camera setup um, you can see on the top right where I have the actual front door the front door is the zone so if you get up to that front door as soon as you break that entryway or you get close to it it's gonna give me a heads up here's the other camera views I've got if you look on this one if you look to the top left where the road is um, I actually use this with our kids and their bus in the morning so as the bus rounds this corner we don't actually have to be outside watching for it we just take a look there on the screen and then when it rounds the corner we head them outside and they're ready for the bus so it's been pretty handy from that perspective that is the light when it's on it just saw me there we go I'll show you here. When you go around to the front of the house. Here, it'll get me in the zone. That's the light there. There's one over there too. So here I am coming up to the front of my door. It's at night. Here's my phone. Let's see here. There we go. Coming up to the door, there's the camera up there. Light came on. It's hard to see. There's a notification right here. Motion detected. Here's an example of the notification you'll get on your email as soon as uh, somebody breaks one of your zones. And this is the attached picture it took. So you can see that the light came on as well. There I was.
Moving on to the smartphone app. This is the app I used. I used this Lorax app. Here's the current display. It's in real time. You get those four windows. These are your four cameras. You can change the display along the bottom here. You'll notice the different grids. You have some choices when it comes to that as well. You can select to turn the audio on. So I double clicked on this image here. It's showing my left garage. It's showing the time and date. This is a live stream. You can see this is at night. Um, you also have, there's a light bulb there and an alarm, so you can turn the light on man manually or ring the alarm. You have a choice with this app. You can watch it in live view or you can choose one of these other items. Um, one of the big things here is for this uh, is playback. You can choose what type of playback you want. All continuous. You want just the motion. You can pick the date and then essentially you click the house that you live in or whatever you've named it and then pick the camera that you want to take a look at so in this case we're gonna look at the left garage and along the bottom you have your timeline so those timeline you see the yellow the yellow lines there those are all the times when motion was detected the app can work in both portrait and landscape mode as I just flipped the phone by accident and I'm scrolling along the time and you can see there's one who broke my um, my zone that light got into my zone there's another one with our van pulling in um, and it just goes from there. So it makes it very easy. So if you're not at the house, um, you can see who's come in, who hasn't. You'll also get a notification pushed through the app itself, as well as the email notification if you want. So you have a lot of ways to be uh, identified. It's come in really handy on a couple of occasions. Um, we had it, some packages dropped off the house, and I was able to see that somebody dropped them off, and I grabbed my neighbor um, through my cell phone just to go pick them up for me. Here's the view of the front door and the brown part of the door is actually where the zone is. I can turn the light on from remote. I can sound the siren from remote. So I have a lot of options there as well. Uh, you can see the quality is very good. It looks very easy and clear and the app itself works quite well. I'm uh, pretty happy with the 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 way it works and you can also do all of the different detections and settings in here as well so anything I can pretty much do on the main client or my computer I can almost do all of that through the app I'm pretty happy with how the app works so that's it in a nutshell there's a couple different ones out there this is the one I found that worked good for me before I wrap this video up, I know I had a question in regards to how I would integrate this into my smart home. The system itself is a fairly standalone system, but I did think of a couple of pretty neat ideas where you could do this. Uh, one of the ideas I came up with was because it pushes you a, a Gmail notification uh, as an email, what you could do is set up an if then then that rule. If you're not familiar with if then then that, take a look online, you'll be able to see it. But essentially it's a rule where it says if something happens, then something else will happen. And you can get your smart home to work with you on that. So just as an example for this, if I got an email notification that somebody broke through one of the zones, then you could turn on all my upstairs lights in the house or play a siren or something. So there's a lot of different ways that you can integrate things if you're creative. Um, and that was one right away that I thought of, okay, that could work pretty good. So in the middle of the night, if somebody was at your front door, you could have it turn on all the lights in the house, turn on all the lights upstairs, whatever you wanted to help you sort that out. Anyways, that's just one idea. If you have other ideas that you can think of, let me know. I think it'd be great to know more. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd love some more subscribers. I'm still a new channel and I'm working hard to try and put out some cool videos around smart home and auto automation, things like that, that people can uh, latch on to. So anyways, thanks very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.